Ahoy and welcome, I am Lee the Pirate Tester and welcome to Tuesday Night Testing. This is the second in my live stream where as a software testing professional for over a decade now I want to try and make testing more visible as well as show how I do things and try different approaches out really. If you're in the chat live with me I'd love you to say hi where possible. If you're watching this back please let me know in the comments what you think. So today I will be looking at a, a site designed for testing so this is one I've been given express permission for but if you have a site that you manage that you would like me to uh, do some public testing on or if you know of sites which are intentionally designed for testing on rather than a publicly bad site let me know in the comments or you can contact me on twitter of at the pirate tester you can uh, i'm on blue sky where i'm uh, the pirate tester and then all the blue sky things i'm on linkedin or you can email me at the pirate tester at gmail.com Hi Danny Dayton in the chat, it is lovely to see you. Now, let's begin. So I am doing, I only have one monitor so occasionally I flick over between it but I'm only sharing this tab. And once my mouse is over you will see a tab as well. On top of this I have a Google Doc ready so I can note what I'm looking for, things I find, and whilst I haven't got anyone I can send these things to, I still want to show you how I would evidence things I found, questions, issues, concerns that I would pass along if I was, say, raising a normal Jira ticket. So welcome to JPET Store 6. I can edit the store and there's a copyright that is not even a real link. So we shall enter the store. Unsurprisingly, it looks like a pet store. We have the store link demo, and if I hover over it, I get catalog actions in the corner. I have a very tiny cart icon. I can sign in. I have a question mark. A search field and search box. Uh, I can click on fish, but I can't click on the sub options. Dogs, cats, of which there are various breeds or exotic varieties, reptiles, birds, and with the pictures, it looks like I can do it. So one thing I did on my last video, so I did a lot of exploratory testing, but I never got round to using any of the tools. So there are a couple of Chrome plugins that I have that I want to try and show off in this as well. So one of them is Wave, and if I right click, I'll get the option of wave this page and if you're wanting to do any accessibility testing wave is a fantastic and free tool and it will tell you what's going on so straight away there are 21 errors two contrast errors two alerts one feature no structural elements no area i can view details and if i hover over it it shows me where these problems are with the contrasts it doesn't like the link or the search field, which to my eyes looks fine, but there will all be specific limits and so forth. So we've got links with no accessible names. So if I was trying to use a screen reader, so in this order role and accessible name, what's read by screen number, if I was using a screen reader with this, I wouldn't know what I'm being told it is. Um, I have worked on a past site where um, there was little question marks and if you hover over it it then gave you some text as to explain what's going on. But when I used it with a screen reader, if you tab through, it never told you what was in the magically appearing text box by hovering. It would just say help. So when you tab through them, it just kept saying help 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 and things like makes me go accessibility was never considered oh, I've made sure I've got two drinks of this as well 
Though, if this was a real website for consumers, straight away they are not wanting to have anyone with a screen reader use this. So they feel that people with visual impairments of some kind shouldn't be buying pets from them, which is not great. It has no structure, so if when you're writing documents you can have like header one, header two, so forth. With this, there isn't any, so it's just a whole pile of stuff on on a page. And then you can look at contrasting, and it will tell you if something passes or fails. And you can select your colors, you can change your So if you wanted to go, oh, does this combination work? got two different standards WCAG AA and WCAG AAA and for example it would like certain things so one other thing you can do with this and accessibility isn't something I have done anywhere near as much as I would like but even just things like this I can see things wrong you can turn off styling which is useful on some sites because you can see if the styling isn't enabled for any reason what happens to it this is one of the surprisingly better ones where it doesn't just completely fall apart. But yeah, so that is Wave. So if I wave this page again, it hides it. Fantastic. Let's try and sign in. So from there, we can come back to get the options. Please enter your username and password. Don't know what the username is. There's a password apparently already saved, so if, can we copy that? What happens if you try and paste it in here? Nope, that's me advertising this. Right, so if I try to log in, nothing happened. It it tried to do something, it didn't tell me. Let's put an A in. So, invalid username or password, sign in failed. So, if it's empty, it doesn't tell you then. It's weird it repopulates the password with something. If I was testing this, I would point out it is good that it isn't specifically saying what is wrong. So if a site says like invalid username, if you had a leaked series of um, email addresses, you could then just start bombarding it and go, okay, if it said invalid username and then suddenly it was my email address, pirate test for Gmail, and it just said invalid password, they know I have an account there. Whereas the fact it, you don't know if it's the username or the password, the user could exist and the password's wrong, or the user might not exist. So that's a good piece of actual security they have on there. But another tool, and a tool I absolutely love, is one called bug magnet this is a piece of kit that i install on every work device i am allowed to so i always go can i have chrome plugins like if i require permission i just go i would like this please it doesn't save information to the computer but it has a whole load of options so i could go i want to use just lorem characters and from there i can have different things so if i just wanted latin just the classic lorem ipsum pile of stuff. It will put it in. Great. But sometimes you're not necessarily wanting to check traditional Latin characters, like the English characters, as it were. You might want Cyrillic, you might want Arabic, Chinese, mixed characters there, Czech, Thai, Hindi, Unicode. I mean, they look like letters. There's all sorts going on there. There's even an emoji in there. And there's just so many options. So if you wanted names of... Um, often with characters where some things might get upset because it doesn't like um, apostrophe in there. It doesn't like quotes in a name. It doesn't like non-English characters. So ones which would be, in, for example, the um, Spanish alphabets. If you want... Like Dutch, uh, not Dutch, uh, Icelandic, 
and just really long names and so forth. You got ones of name length. What happens if someone's surname is just a single character? In some countries, that is allowed. In other countries, it is not. If they have a very long surname, if they have legally changed their name, and this person did because I read about it in a testing book, um, because they wanted to make a point. Or what happens if like their first name is only a single character versus their surname is a single character in some cultures, countries, that is allowed, but certain databases, certain setups might not allow that. So if someone's last name what well, if someone's name was Stephen O and they try to register you for your site and you go, No, your name's invalid I mean, it's their name, it is valid. You have poor handling. So are they forced to just be like Stephen O O? Are they just going to not use your website? If they were to put, say, Stephen O.O. and then you need to validate who they are, that won't work. And yeah. What happens if they just have a single word for their name? They. Or share. Or teller from Pen and Teller. So forth. Um, right. This is where it's going to be more juicy because I've got lots and lots of fields here. Great. So I can do. Lots of things with bug mode things here. So we've got like names, unusual characters, accents. There was a person, I think they were New Zealand, actually called Number 16 Bus Shelter. That is the legal name. I don't know if it still is, but it, that's what they were given. Um, right, there's one here called John James Bond with middle names. Uh, someone names their child all the James Bond movies that there were up to that point. So I think Casino Royale was the most recent James Bond film when they named their child. Because again, depending on where you are, there is no limit to how many names you can have, but some things don't like it. Um, if I was ever to try and want to break a system the, the test room he loves the idea if, if my name was legally like null test because does it freak out if I said my first name is null when it tries to save things or if they see a, someone's account and they see the name test they go well that's not real would I get information posted to me emailed to me etc that I shouldn't get do I not get things that I should get because they see tests and go oh it's not real we can abandon them how do they behave with it? Um, but what I will first do is if I said I want to save my new account. Okay, D did it save? What do we do with it? Nothing said it's successful, nothing said it's unsuccessful. So if I was given this site, I would go, we have no error handling for empty fields. Because if we say you must have all of these which is unlikely because not everyone for example has an address to then you're not you're not telling us these are uh, required and you're not giving us an error if we try to save them saying they're essential um i'm all curious because this leads to help Sign up, click the sign in that new link and verse. Among other information, the site will go to you. A user identifying password is used to identify you. So I was curious if there was like a dummy one for signing in. So we're going to be user ID in the spirit of James Bond 007. Our password will be password and password. Let's be James Bond, but just James Bond. Email, right. And again, this thing's bug magnet it can do with emails. So do you want a valid email? Do you want a nice simple one? Do you want ones which are legitimate, but very, very complicated? Or do you want an invalid email? So if there's like plain address, that's not a valid email address because it has no at. 
Um, whereas we could go, we want a numeric domain. Is it, it says it's legitimate, I wouldn't know, but what I will do is I will see if I get anything for the pirate tester at gmail.com. Do I, right, I'm going to see if I can just do that. And I got a 500 error. So it doesn't like. Yay for me. And I know SQL. I know enough of SQL to be dangerous. And it doesn't like a whole load of empty fields. It doesn't know. It's like uh, email, first name, last name, status, address. A whole load of these are empty. So let's have one, add one, add two. A city, a state, a zip, a country. I prefer, I could have English or Japanese. That's a surprising option. Um. Save reptiles because it's not default. Yeah, let's have it my list. Let, let's save all this. What happens? Oh, it works. Right. So my username is 007. It remembered that. I didn't ask it to remember me. Hmm. Your password. There's no option to reset. I will point out. Do you want to save? Uh, no, because this is. So come out of your shell, get a pet. Okay. So I can sign out. Cool. I can sign back in. I am 007 with password. I am curious if this is a site that recite uh, that has a database that just clears down periodically and therefore it isn't ever doing anything it shouldn't. Um, if it's like if I chose one and it'd be like someone else has got it or yeah. Right, so we can get in, we can sign in now. We got a cart, we've got no cart, it's empty. Cool. We got a search box, I love it. Like, as you saw from me like trying to register an account, there's so many things you can do with it. But I don't want to get too far down on showing off a uh, bug magnet. I can do a dedicated video on that. I just wanted to give you a bit of a teaser as what I can do. As you saw, it could populate fields, which is great. So we've got a search, so I want to search for dog. Oh, there is a friendly dog. It does not friendly. That is not a bulldog. Not a bulldog. Somehow, if you search for dog, you don't see poodle or this Dalmatian or that Dalmatian, any Dalmatian. Great family dog. Well, why didn't dog? Find the dog. Alright, or a cat. We know they do cats. No cat. You search for cat, you don't get cat. How's that work? If, so, we know there is a cat type called Manx. So can I search for a Manx? So I think it is only searching for name. Because when I search for dog, and dog is in Bulldog. Well done. So if I click on fish, I see the option of fish. If I click on the picture of fish, I get the option of fish. Is it sending me to the things it should? So looking at the address bar at the bottom, and sadly I don't know if that is something that gets properly shown to you. Do I... They're all showing the appropriate thing. It is a shame there is all this dead space at the bottom. That I feel I should be doing something with. Hmm. Um, I will say as I'm doing this, if you are enjoying what I'm doing, I am available for work. Um, so I am currently in between jobs at the moment. If you have full-time work available, please get in touch. But also if you wanted me to do something like this 
but for it not to be streamed, I could record it privately and send it to you, or I could just share my results, get in touch, and I'm sure we can negotiate like hourly rates, or if you wanted X amount of work being done rather based on time. Yeah, we can talk about that. But virtually, if you're liking what I'm doing, how I'm doing things, and you want to help me out in a little way, I have a Ko-Fi link. So if you wanted to chuck a couple of quid at me, just to say, like, thanks for what you're doing, whether it's, you know, live or you watch it back, I, I won't say no. I had a couple of friends do that to me last time, which was uh, incredibly sweet, and thank you very much to both of them. So, yeah. You can... There are many ways you can help out, even if it's, like, leaving a comment, getting in the chat, um, tweeting me, LinkedIn me, just letting people know this exists. Because... As anyone who has ever done anything involved putting themselves out online, the most horrifying thing is talking to yourself, which is really sad. All right, that mini plug out of the way, let's get back to seeing what we got. So we have the most options for dogs. Closely brought by fish. I've heard of koi. I mean, I've heard of age, definitely know, everyone knows goldfish, but koi really more interesting. So I can add to cart here. And if I see next row, I see like EST4. If I click into it, I can also add it from there. So it is back orders. Does that mean I can't have it? I want a koi. I'm going to put it in. Um, so I can remove it. Okay. Let's go back to our koi. Add it in. If I change the quantity to zero, it does take it out. Okay. In stock, false. Hmm. So the spotless koi is out of stock, and the spotted koi is out of stock. Well, okay, I won't get a koi then. What about goldfish? You got goldfish? Female goldfish and cheaper. And it feels like there should be, like, is it, why is the bit of grey there and then nothing here? I've also realized I've not been making notes of anything I've been found. This is terrible, Lee, you said you were going to make notes. Back order, is there anything they've actually got in stock? Have they got any fish in stock? I bought a fish. Tiger shark, back orders. Angel fish, got any angel fish? Back orders. Nah. Alright, what about dog? Back order. Is everything on back order? Back order. Right, fine. If we're gonna have back order, let's go. Alright, tiger shark. They sound cool. Right. So I could have one. Is there a limit to how many I can have? Okay, so we didn't like a silly big amount. Can I have 20 of them? Can I have 200 of them? Can I have 2,000 tiger sharks? How many tiger sharks is too many tiger sharks? Can I have $37 million worth of tiger sharks, please? I would like all the tiger sharks you have. Yeah, let's go check it out. So I only get an email when it's actually deployed. I'm, yeah, this is a test thing, but right. I could ship to somewhere else. Cool. Okay, I want to ship to a different address. You can have. Okay. Gives me different options. Numeric value out of range. I don't think it appreciated me asking for like $3.7 billion worth of fish. So let's, st let's actually start putting notes in. So um, when ordering, I made an order for, I think it was like 2 million 
fish totaling over three no not pounds this is the American type three billion dollars worth of fish so we got a 500 error was returned so Let's copy that in because that's the problem. A question to ourselves for the future what is the table size? Uh, well, the column size. Size limit. And why does the front end not prevent this? So this to me is an example where if you had, say, a back-end team and a front-end team, you might even have middle dealing with API stuff. If you're going to have any size limits on a column or in a database, if that information isn't passed to the people who look after the front-end, they won't stop it. Now, you might have it where the front end will prevent it and someone can manipulate data between sending it and it going to the database. So that's where you could use a tool, for example, such as Burp Suite, where you can intercept the data, change it, play around with it. But if someone's doing that, they're already trying to break things, trying to manipulate the system. But if you can't, if you say you, um, no one was allowed to order my, more than 99 of something, don't let me put in two million fish. It's just a terrible, terrible idea. Right, I want to go back to my account. Right. So one thing I also love doing with a quantity is can I have a quant? So it allowed us to have a zero, and it removed it. Right. Three, one, two, three. Yeah, it was two million fish. If we're going to be technical, let's actually put the exact amount in because we still got it. That's a lot of uh, fish. It's probably not even that many you could ever realistically get hold of. Um, so yeah, so if I was to change this quantity to minus one. Okay, good to know. So setting a quantity of minus one does empty it. It treats it just like zero. Setting cart's quantity to minus one remove the item rather than try it and get a refund. Because again that's something that I've uh, read about in books and when I did uh, some user testing as part of an interview they had an option for like how many days has this thing been happening for and you could manually enter the number so i did and i set it to minus one and it saved and then the front end was saying this has been happening for minus one days and you're like that's not right um so it's good that they stopped that groovy what about a realistic amount of something let's have one of something Please confirm, we're going to confirm it. Thank you, your order's been submitted. Great. I've got, I mean, I've got no way to check it. Um, I doubt in my personal emails I'm getting anything. Yeah, nothing's in Enterprise because it's not set up, so based on what this says, um, the application can be set up through 
to send email confirmation orders. Well, I'm using this site. I'm not like installed it or bought this product from or anything like that. So it's not doing anything related. Um, I mean, so that's good. And then after we've done that, the cart empties. Great. Um, so yeah, let's make a comment in our notes about searching for dog. So, when searching and dog was entered, it only returns bulldog. Even though there is dog in the description. So it appears to be what a toy. What's wrong with returns? So yeah, let's go yeah, let's be grammatically correct. It appears to only search against name, not animal category or description. For example, see, and in this case, I can do a little cheeky screenshot. Now, because I'm on Windows, some people use Screen Clipper, and it can you can take things, you can paste it, or so forth. Um, if you do Windows Shift S, it comes with it built in, and in this case, I can say I just want to drag a specific area. That will add it to my clipboard. It's not saved to my desktop and like that. I can then paste it in here. Um, right, let's go back to the main thing. So we can again, we've got different animal types. Parrot. It looks like a parrot. Great companion for up to 75 years. But if I got like a 74 year old parrot, I'd be very annoyed if I spent $193.50 on it versus I got a one year old parrot, for example. Like, how old a parrot can I get? How young a parrot can I get? Whereas a finch, they're much cheaper, but they're great stress reliever, but how long do they live for? Hmm. I'm curious, so you've got a product ID and then you've got an item ID. And so it's giving you like the item code up here. This is the AB, SB02. How on earth is that decided? <laughs> Reptiles, you've got lizards and snakes. Lizards, turtles, snakes. you got no turtles. Cats, you've got various breeds and exotic varieties. Which of the exotic breeds and which of the sound varieties like is a Manx a rare one? Like it's cheaper with a tail? I'm paying more for less cat. They also have the same product are they? Probably yeah, oh, because they're Manx, yeah. Doubles as a princess. Does the male Apparently, the male also doubles as they bridge this. So, male Persian cat description says it doubles as a princess. Copy and paste error used in female Persian. I'm going to be petty, and hey, that's what I'd do as a tester. Um, landing page lists turtles under reptiles. However, none are listed. 
And it might be that they go, oh, we've got it set up so that if we have them, we don't have to maintain it. It's like, things to me feel like they should be subcategories. Like, they go, oh, I want to know what saltwater fish you've got. Make that link. Dogs, various breeds. That doesn't tell me anything. You could just say dogs. If you're not going to give me useful information, why are you giving me that information? Like, what was... What was the reason for that being added? Who said, oh, we need to say various breeds of dogs? Because if you said dogs, what? Well, I think, oh, they just do one breed, and that's it. Like, if the site was called, like, J Bulldog Store, or J Great Dalmatian store. I would probably think that's the only type of dog you do. But you're a pet store. And if you're going to have various breeds of dogs, you don't need to say it. Like, we do a various breeds and exotic varieties. Are exotic varieties not a various breed? I don't know. So, yeah, there's usability things of this. What's also surprising is, as you use the site, the search bar doesn't tidy up itself. And if you leave it empty, it is giving this twice. When using the search functionality and leaving it empty, it gives the following error message twice. It's like, what's making it do that um right we've seen it we can make this site break by doing different things to it right now i want to get back on bug magnet for a minute because one of the options you can have is text size with or without spaces and you can have like 128 bits all the way up to 64,000 plus one yeah, we're doing that. Okay. Why? <laughs> now, I... I right, we are going to make... An empty Google Doc. And um, what I'm going to paste in. No. Because uh, it's that I feel I can't do it. Uh, we're going to copy that. And uh, we're going to paste it in there. And then it's going to go mental for a second. It's like, why are you trying to paste so much stuff? Or not? There we go. Now, it replaces itself pretty fast. So why is it returning things over and over and over again? What is it about this? So if I wrote dog, 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 do I see the same dog three times? Well, that's interesting, and we will note that. Uh, so, in addition to above, if the same word is repeated multiple times, it returns once per word. And this is where I would definitely want to screenshot that. So we will show dog 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 returns three bulldogs. <laughs> the product ID is the same. The pitch is the same. The link is the same. It's the same thing. But for some reason, in addition to the above. So yeah, again, that is something that we like. Dog. 
and dog. Because we is it quoting it? I'm not that good at SQL injection, I know certain things do, and this does have exploits in it. So at least it doesn't go back. Return to main menu, thank you very much. Um, so yeah, there is... It's quite a limited site, which is potentially good, um, but conversely it makes me think there's only so much I can actually show off as part of this. Not having that bulldog. Same picture. Alright. One more tool I've got. Um, it's not necessarily useful for testing. Um, but there is a site, there is a option I've got. And reverse, rev I, reverse image search. So if you've ever got an image and you want to know where it comes from. It searches a whole bunch of stuff. That is not that source. You lied to me. I mean, it's, it feels like it's that one. Related content. So it uses like Google, Bing, Yandex, which I'd never heard of before. And TinEye, which I'd never heard of before either. But again, you can go, yeah, this is that picture. Cropped in different ways. So if you ever wanted to know, if there's a picture you wanted to go, where has this come from? Like, is it a new picture? Is it from something else on the internet, etc.? Handy tool if you ever want to go, where's this from? Um, right, so we're going to have one of them. We're going to fill things out. Now it's remembering all of our information. Should it be remembering... All of our billing things. I mean, that's why we have to fill it out, I suppose. We've got enable my list and enable my banner. Oh, I can see my orders. Ooh. Well, that's good. Right. Stop showing me about Robbie. Drop Bobby Tables. Um. If I change that, does that change the picture at the bottom? Reload it? Nah, that's going on. Um, yeah. So, what else would I do with this? So, because I've got time capacity and so forth, so we can inspect this. And this isn't going to show you, which is annoying. Ooh. Does that actually do it on there for you? I'm going to. The problem is because there's a lag between me doing things and um, what you see on screen. Like, if I do something, I don't know if it's then actually caught up or not. Okay, so YouTube has caught up. What you are seeing has now caught up. So, for example, so I've loaded DevTools. Because I've got it only showing a specific um, Chrome window, it normally does not show me turning on Chrome tools, which is infuriating. But what it will do in this case is it's showing you, if I want it to be a particular size. So how does this site handle being in a mobile view and the response is it is terrible right we'll turn off the hovering over things so if i was trying to click on this i'm getting all this dead space if i was on my phone if i turn it sideways i get a bit more visibility and then i have to click and drag around to get to the bottom of it so it's not immediately apparent. There's something at the bottom. 
So I want to look at birds. So I can, I can click on things. I can get more information about things. We're going to get rid of my parrot. But the site doesn't like being portrait because it looks terrible. Um, so yeah, if you're ever needing to do mobile testing, you can use um, dev tools in your browser. Like I pretty much only really use Chrome, so that is my go-to for everything. Like, I, like Edge will do it. But generally, if you're using stuff, it will probably be able to do it. If you're not using Chrome and using something else, make sure you know why you're using that. If you're using Chrome and something else, again, no, why are you using that? It could be, like, the, depending on the company you work at, you might have information of what your external customers use. And if you go, well, like, so many of our customers are using Chrome, but so many are using Safari or Firefox or Edge or whatever, then test what your customers are using, but be realistic with it like i've seen ones where it's like oh this percentage is using, using chrome and it's a version number and then this percent is using virtually the same number but it's like 0 0.001 versus 0 0.002 so you're like well actually we've got a whole load of people using this browser what are actual proper different browsers not just slight variations um so yeah if you wanted to go how does the site look on a mobile without having to put it onto a mobile for any reason get the um, device to uh, have it where you can say this is the size so yeah it gets after a certain width it just stretches but you compress it and then it gets smaller and smaller, and smaller until it's you know ridiculous I don't know, I'm on a pixel 5 if you know the size of it you can just say You can choose what your devices are. Handy. Um, so yeah, I think I'm going to wrap up a little bit early today. Um, it has been a quiet one. So I haven't had the interaction in chat that I did last time, which is unfortunate, but it was nice to uh, put this out there. Again, if you like what you see let me know if there's sites you would like me to test on if you've got public work you would like me to have a crack at so long as i have permission to do it i will give it a go and put it on if you've got private work you would like me to do get in touch we can agree a rate you see how i work what the kind of things i do are so i can pull that out for you i will be back on at the same time next week so that is Tuesday the 8th of August so that will be at 8 p.m. UK time on the 8th day of the 8th month I don't think 888 is ominous it's quite meant to be quite lucky um, so for that I will be doing the website exit 23 games where um, that is uh, partly owned by a manager I used to work with a lovely gentleman called Chris Chant or if it's ever written down, it's Christopher Chant because he likes his name fully lengthened out. Um, so he does uh, like gaming, war gaming, board games, paints, that kind of stuff. So it's something that I am interested in from a hobby perspective. Again, it will have some um, shopping cart functionality. I won't put through full orders, but I will look around, see how it goes. Um, seeing how well, for example, I can tab through it because the... Uh, as soon as I waved this page, I knew it was not great. I knew if I tried to tab through, it wasn't going to be a good journey. So there was no point even thinking about that. Uh, sign out. I lose my little picture at the bottom. That's the same. Where's 007? Back on oh my password. Don't let people use password as a password either. Come on, shall get better. This feels like it should do something at least. If I reverse image it, is that again a picture stolen from somewhere? Pet shop Netiets. 
Oh, this side is a Whereas, you know, like, that is not even remotely close to what that is. It's seeing some, like, writing. And there's, like, there's a lizard on there? Yeah. Fine. Can't find it. Um, so, yeah. I hope if you're watching this back, you've enjoyed it. Please get in touch. Again, you can... Uh, email me thepiratester at gmail.com you can message down in the comments and I get notifications you can get me on uh, LinkedIn, I am Lee Marshall you can get me on Twitter at thepiratester I am on Blue Sky, I'm the Pirate Tester, and then all the Blue Sky stuff so I am around thank you all for joining in with me today and